Well, good afternoon. I am uh, Sidney Katz, the immediate past president of the Montgomery County Council. And for those of you who are wondering about the immediate, I, I, um, uh, on Tuesday, we were uh, the Montgomery County Council elected, and I congratulate uh, Council President Tom Hucker and Vice President Gabe Albernaz. And I know both of those gentlemen will do a marvelous job uh, as, as the president and as the vice president. But I'm um, uh, the District 3 County Council representative, uh, and I uh, am delighted that we are being joined here today, and everyone else is being is joining us on Zoom for our 15th business briefing. The purpose of this briefings, of these briefings, has been to help local businesses and nonprofits navigate through our new economic reality. The, and I'm very happy today to welcome James Chung, who's the president of Reach Advisors uh, to today's business briefing. Mr. Chung has a wealth of experience and you're gonna find that out in about in two seconds here. And he will share his, item, uh, his ideas related to the county's economic recovery from the impacts of COVID-19 and to fulfilling our immense economic potential for the benefit of all of the 1.1 million residents. We will then take questions from our Zoom audience. Please send your questions to the chat box on the right of the screen. Uh, I also wanted to thank Laurie Edberg from my office, who, was, who gets these briefings together for us, which is not an easy task, and she does a wonderful job on that. And I, of course, always want to thank Susan Kennedy, who moderates these briefings. She always does a wonderful job as well. And with that, Susan, please let us begin. Well, thank you, Council Member Katz. And that's going to be difficult for me to get used to, too. I've called you Mr. President for so long, but congratulations on a very successful year. And you navigated the Council through a very difficult time and did a wonderful job. Um, thank you very much. And we have James Chung with us today. Mr. Chung, thank you so much. You're, you're coming to us from Northern New York, we understand. Talk a little bit about Reach Advisors and how you got connected with Montgomery County. And I know you have a little bit of a presentation you'd like to share with us as well to start us off. Susan, uh, thank you. Uh, we were brought in at the start of the year by the Montgomery County Business Roundtable and the Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation to take a look at uh, what is the future of Montgomery County? What have been the challenges and what are the potentials to break through? And we were brought into this because we did something, uh, an abbreviated version of this for Frederick County, maybe about five years ago or so. And so there were some people involved in that uh, with the Montgomery County Business Roundtable who thought that it was the right time to take a look at these issues for Montgomery County as well too. And as we dived into this issue, uh, we realized it was probably pretty wise timing because Montgomery County is this very interesting uh, decision point about uh, where it's heading in the future. Uh, sort of a fork in the road, basically. And talk a little bit about some of those findings. I know you, you've got some branding ideas, you've got some ideas on, on how our job growth has, has progressed over the past few years. Um, you know, we look at the, the jobs in the county, we have a lot of small businesses. Our job growth has mostly been in the area of lower paying jobs, not the higher paying jobs. Can you walk us through a little bit of, of what you have found in your research about Montgomery County? Okay, let's think about the best way to do this. Uh, that was a two-hour presentation uh, a couple weeks ago, but... Uh, means maybe, you're going to have to speak, speak fast, that means. That's yeah, <laughs> maybe what I'll try to do is I try to reduce some of the slides, and maybe what I'll do is maybe do 10 minutes, try 10 minutes of highlights, oh, and then uh, leave time for some questions after that. Perfect. So let me do the share screen here and go to desktop two, and let's see if you're able to... Um, ah. Hold on a second, I'm gonna to have to do, uh, uh, okay, hold on a second, let's see if I can add this, and for some reason, it is not letting me. So with that, why don't I talk through these issues as sure plan B. Um, okay, so you won't be seeing the visuals, but I think we can get the message across here. And it was interesting when brought in because Montgomery County is a powerhouse. Um, we didn't recognize this until we started, but Montgomery County's economy is bigger than 13 states in the U.S. And it's not just because it's a bigger county. It's because there's such high productivity in this economic productivity in this county. 
And it's a 99th percentile county on so many measures, or more accurately, 99.5. It's one of the best counties in the U.S. by many measures. But I can see why they were getting sort of really concerned about it, because when we looked at it, Montgomery County had a fantastic run-up in the 80s and 1990s when we looked at it. Um, basically, there was massive infrastructure improvement, you know, red line 270, 370. Um, the NIH budget really skyrocketed in the 1990s. Um, and with that, it became the suburban community choice for DC. It was where you wanted to be. But starting after about to mid 2000s, Montgomery County just flatlined for about 15 years. Um, in part, the NIH budget had dropped. Um, in part, what we thought was really odd is that um, after the last recession, um, at the end of the 2000s, around 2009, um, Montgomery County did not recover anywhere near like the rest of the U.S. Household income, household income grew much less than the rest of the U.S. It grew much less than the rest of the DMV. Um, one of the things that really concerned us is uh, young adults, age 25 to 44, there's basically almost no growth of the backbone of the workforce, and it's not attracting the same level of income and education of those young adults. Basically what's happening is the job growth in Montgomery County has been in lower paying jobs. The job loss has been higher paying jobs. So basically not what you wanna see happen. So I can see why there was concern. Then we looked at business formation, and um, basically across the US, there's almost always one net new business added for every 21 new residents or whatever. And Montgomery County kept growing, but business formation absolutely just flatlined since the last recession versus the rest of the US, it recovered. Um, and uh, it's not just versus the US versus the DMV, um, it slowed down. And so there were concerns. And when we looked at it, we dug into a couple structural uh, drivers behind it. And one is a concept that we call traded clusters versus local clusters. Traded clusters are related industries that primarily serve markets beyond the region. In other words, they export their product and uh, the high paid jobs of that company are headquarters locally, and they're free to choose a location, but typically concentrate in a few regions that have very specific advantages. Um, and then there are local clusters, which are industries that primarily serve the local market. Um, they're both needed for a healthy and prosperous regional economy. But um, the reason why we wanted to focus on, the, on that di differentiation is most businesses are local cluster businesses, but, um, and Montgomery County is sort of on average in terms of distribution for the rest of the US. But the rest of the DMV and for most stronger cities have much higher ratio of traded cluster businesses. They're the ones that generate higher wages, higher wage growth, um, higher job growth, more regional GDP growth. And Montgomery County does not have, for a powerhouse county, it actually has a very low percentage of those traded cluster businesses. There's another structural thing that we also flag too, and this starts to get a little bit more complex based off the work of our data science firm, is that um, we can deconstruct local market economies by a concept called alpha and beta, which are borrowed concepts from Wall Street. Alpha is the level of structural growth that's you know beyond the love, beyond normal cyclical you know, basically, where is their growth that's, that's, that's abnormally strong um, on a risk-adjusted, cyclically-adjusted cyclically, cyclically basis? And there's beta, which is how variable is it to, you know, how sensitive is the U.S. economy, shifts in the U.S. economy? And what we found is um, Montgomery County is very modest alpha. Um, it outperforms the U.S. by just a little bit. And the reason why is life sciences. But the problem is life sciences usually injects a ton of alpha into an economy. Montgomery County is a ton of alpha, or a ton of life sciences, but it doesn't get much alpha driving it. It, it just doesn't get the same kind of juice mm -hmm. that Boston or Raleigh, Durham or San Diego get from the life sciences. Um, then regarding beta, the good news is it's low beta. It's much less cyclical than the rest of the US because the federal dominance creates building downturns. But we also notice that the federal dominance has been in a way constraining growth during economic expansion because it's not a, an economy geared up for, for growth like that. So if Montgomery County wants to outperform again and, um, and just you know, bring in more quality jobs, job growth, wage growth, um, outperformance will be driven by growing more traded cluster businesses and unlocking hidden alpha, which is a concept that our clients that use the data science serve look for. Where can they find outsized growth for? So in other words, it's like, you know, instead of just adding bodies, how are they adding like 
you know, more talented, higher productive, higher educated um, audience. And the good news behind this is Montgomery County does have a couple of pockets of very significant assets already in place to grow alpha and traded cluster businesses, but it just hasn't fully capitalized on it yet. Um, number one of those areas is the hospitality industry. When we looked at it, it was amazing. When we looked at the, basically the market capitalization for the hospitality industry in the US, more than 50% of the US market cap is headquartered in Montgomery County between Marriott, Choice Hotels, um, and then between the REITs here, you know, more than 50% of the hotel real estate investment trusts are based in Montgomery County. So it's a powerhouse. And then you have others in the hospitality ecosystem. You have the hotel operators um, in Montgomery County. You have, uh, you know, the food services companies where the internet, the international companies where the U.S. headquarters in Montgomery County. So there's a lot here. And you have a couple of hospitality tech companies that are moving in. The, they're here as well, too, which they should be because their biggest customers are here. Their best labor pool is here. But, you know, so one of the things we're thinking about is how, what opportunities do we have to generate even higher value from this unique agglomeration of industry talent? There are very few counties in America where more than half of the industry is headquartered there. It's an extremely rare thing. Um, but as we think about it, if Montgomery County doesn't do anything, the industry is in reinvention now because of the pandemic and COVID, it's gonna last for a long, not, not, well, we're hoping the pandemic doesn't last for long, but the reinvention is in gear. So Montgomery County in a way has the most to lose in terms of jobs lost, headquarters, you know, staff moving away. Um, but it also has the right to win, which is the concept we're big on is what do you have the reason to win in leading the reinvention of the hospitality industry? And a lot of that reinvention is going to inevitably involve technology innovation because they're figuring out how can they still deliver the service with lower staff that's going to be technologically added. And Montgomery County technology has not been a strength of Montgomery County, um, but um, Montgomery County is the right to win in tech where it already has an unfair advantage. And one of it is that agglomeration of the hospitality industry. So we would like to see the, the overall hospitality industry reinvention happen in Montgomery County because the, the headquarters are here. They're going to be driving a lot of it. They're going to be looking for solutions. But what we'd like to see is a lot more of these high growth hospitality tech companies domicile here. Basically, you know, there are a lot of staff who, aren't gonna, who are furloughed, who aren't going to go back to headquarters jobs. And there are a lot of people in the industry also in the same situation who should come to Montgomery County because they're the ones, you know, who have the, the skills and the, you know, the customers are here. So we think that there's a big cluster of tech businesses that grow around there because Montgomery County does not have its share yet, but it has all the other reasons Montgomery County should win on that. Now, there's another big area for growing alpha and trade and cluster businesses, and that's the life sciences industry. Montgomery County is generally viewed as, or actually, I have to step back, the Washington, D.C. metro area is generally viewed as, it's not Boston and San Francisco when it comes up to life sciences, but it's in that next tier with another half dozen cities. But then we map where all those companies are, those life sciences companies in Washington, D.C., basically, it's I-270 in Montgomery County. <laughs> you know, it's not the D.C. metro area. 90% of that is Montgomery County. Um, and, but the problem is, despite the fact that it's one of the 10 leading cities, it has the lowest venture capital flow of any of those cities. Um, and so that's one of the things that just does not, that's why it's not generating the alpha. It's not generating that dynamic growth that happens in the, the, the job growth and the wage growth that happens when you have that powerhouse in the industry. So we try to figure out what's, what are the unique strengths in Montgomery County? So, you know, other than having the world's largest biomedical research center, <laughs> GS Square in Montgomery County, what are other unique strengths? And so we started this project before, basically we came in in February and then the project shut down in March for obvious reasons. But since we were then just analysts on computers rather than on the ground, we did something interesting. We mapped, basically the World Health Organization was tracking every company and every institution in the world that was trying to develop some kind of COVID uh, vaccine or COVID therapeutic. And so we were able to map and see where the hotspots were across the world. You know, there was Japan, China, um, England, um, and then in the U.S., there was a hotspot in the U.S. Then we drilled down on the map. When we drilled down further and further, it was really interesting, and I wish I could show this map. The world's highest concentration of activity around COVID vaccines and therapeutics is I-270 in Montgomery County. It was amazing. And um, so one of the recommendations we have is 
flat out declare Montgomery County as the advanced immunology capital of the world <laughs> to be able to help support the acceleration of talent flow, new business formation, and capital flow. Because look, we're hoping COVID comes and goes, but we now know that these issues are going to be here with us in different forms. Um, that what Montgomery County has in spades is what the world is going to demand and need more of. So we might as well let the world know it's here and get more of that talent and the businesses. Like I want Montgomery County to be like the U.S. headquarters for all the international companies that are in advanced immunology, stuff like that. Yeah, um, I want the top scientists to think, you know, oh God, I got my job offers in Boston, San Francisco, but more interesting stuff is happening. And immunology is happening in Montgomery County. That's what I want to see happen. So that was another area in terms of driving alpha and, and, uh, and, and more traded cluster businesses. But there's one more thing I'm going to put on the table in the remaining two minutes. And that is, I'm going to just put a question out there. How boldly can Montgomery County shape the future? And um, basically, as we think about the 2030s, every decade, there's a major change in technology that changes everything. You know, in the 40s, it was the vacuum tubes that built the computers that, you know, that the U.S. Army used. 50s transistors, 60s integrated circuits, the 1970s microprocessors, which in the 1980s created personal computers, 1990s that enabled internet, in the, you know, in the last 13 years, mobile. But what's going to happen in 2020, 2030s? We think we already see the signs of what's going to be the fundamental change. It's the quantum computing future. Now, this sort of keep far to understand. I'll step back and define quantum computing. It draws on that weird world of quantum mechanics, the physics of subatomic particles, the things that brought us MRIs and microwaves. But when it comes to computing, basically, computing is basically translating everything that into zeros and ones and controlling switches in our computers. But in the quantum world, there's this concept of superposition where it's no longer zeros and ones, it's exponential states. So you can encode and process data in exponentially more states than zero ones. So you can do things like, amazing, amazing thing. It's going to change everything, just like the internet, just like mobile did. But it, it basically, we're going to see the early signs of this in 2020s. It's going to change the world in the 2030s. We're going to think of quantum like we think of internet today or mobile today. But why are we mentioning this? Because Montgomery County has never been a technological leader. But here's why we put it on the radar screen. Reason number one, most of the current funding and direction for the, for the quantum world is coming out of the federal agencies, including NIST, the Department of Energy's uh, Advanced uh, uh, um, you know, AI Technology Office, uh, uh, DARPA, and IARPA, which is the Intelligence Advanced Research Project Administration in Montgomery County, as is NIST. So the, already the leaders, the, the, the forward vision, those are things that have decisions happening here in Montgomery County now. And reason number two is that when we think about where the hard science research is being done, once again, we mapped it across the world, um, and then we found something really weird. We weren't expecting that the highest concentration of the advanced R&D is happening just across the county border, two, three miles away at UMD. It's pretty ridiculous. UMD has more going on on this than Harvard and MIT combined more than Stanford and Berkeley combined. So the hard stuff is happening right around the corner. One more reason is the lowest hanging fruit for the earliest value creation is cryptography and cybersecurity, which is why it makes sense for a lot of this to happen because Montgomery County is at the epicenter. And then drug discovery is the other low hanging fruit. And here's the other thing I wish I could map is that basically between NIST running down I-70 you know, IARPA, NIH, FDA, UMD, and then up to Fort Meade. It's effectively a 50 mile crescent, which we believe can become as valuable as the 50 miles between San Francisco and San Jose. The, now, we have a head start on a couple pieces. One is the governmental drivers are either in Montgomery County or just across the border, um, you know, between, you know, DOD, you know, what's happening in DC, Department of Energy. Second, Huge head start in academic R&D. It's three miles across the border. Third, Montgomery County is the epicenter for a large portion of future demand because life sciences is where the, where the action is going to happen big time. And that, as we think about it, can create the platforms to attract the remaining key pieces, workforce and business leadership, venture capital and corporate investment. It's another area where I'd like to see a lot more companies, like international companies, set, put, put in their headquarters in Montgomery County in the quantum world. 
um, and attract that kind of talent. So Montgomery County absolutely has the right to win in the quantum computing future. And I know it sounds like, you know, Star Trek-ish, but 90% odds, this is going to change everything and redefine, redefine our economy and our lives. Um, and so Montgomery County is the right to win in quantum com- com- competing future if it has the guts to go for it. Yeah, and that's what I'm going to try to like push. And I'm going to be sticking with Montgomery County to, to just uh, be available and sort of push to think about how does Montgomery not let this opportunity pass away from us? Let but me ask you, Mr. Chung, let me just ask, let me just, just jump in there for just a second. And, and this is all, this is all in, incredible information. And, it, and it's, we, we know these things about Montgomery County. So, so what do you suggest, how do we, do we jump on this and, 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 and market this and rebrand ourselves so people understand that we have all of this to offer here? Yeah, so it's a, this is a really good question because as I tell my clients, your brand is not what you say about yourself, it's what others say about you. And so how do we start to make it clear that that is the case? Now, in terms of branding, like for example, the advanced immunological capital of the world, you know, right now it's sort of hard to bring all those companies together because they're racing to get vaccines and therapeutics out the door. But um, I think that there's, I think that there are wonderful stories to be told that can be brought, that can be made much more visible in the media and in industry about this. Um, I think that, and I get the sense that Montgomery County Economic Development is totally tuned into this idea of let's go get international international companies to headquarter U.S. operations in the U.S. You know, if they are in 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 in, uh, in, um, in advanced uh, immunology and uh, um, or if they are in quantum, um, I think that there are. This has provided sort of impetus for a lot of the quantum leaders to think about, okay, how do we end up really putting this together? Um, I understand that there have been uh, some of the federal elected leaders who have now heard about this and are now, um, have asked for meetings like this to start to think about like what can happen from a legislative and federal side that can help advance this. Because the hospitality industry happened because there were very interesting, like, uh, you know, legislative things and uh, that happened that, that made Montgomery County super attractive for those companies. So let's see if we can do that in the other categories as well too. So a whole range of things that have to come together, but I think that the parties are really starting to tune into this and accelerating. I'm certainly getting a lot of uh, input and feedback and people moving things forward. And um, I think so. I think it's the perfect time to do it. Um, and I think that it's the, the opportunities there. And so um, I think both from just branding as well as the doing part of it, the, he- uh, the heavy lifting part of it, I see a lot of signs those things are in motion. You know, when they invented the word wow, James, I think they were talking about you. Uh, the information <laughs> that you have given, I, I understand it's a two hour lecture, and I, believe me, would sit through all two hours of it. Um, but it, it's just amazing. Let me ask you, and, and I, I'm going to have to go back now and do some of my research on traded clusters and local clusters. And, and um, but now, are the traded clusters and the local clusters, I guess, but are they, do they involve more than for-profit businesses? Or is the government a traded cluster? Is a, or non-profit? How does that work? Yeah, this is sort of a good question. Like, let's take NIH, for example. You know, 80% of the budget is extramural. In other words, grants that they're sending out to research hospitals yeah. and universities and stuff like that. 20% is intramural um, spending that's happening here. But I would consider them sort of a, a traded cluster entity. I think, so I think it's a it's a really good um, it's a really good example of you know what happens within the walls of NIH impacts the rest of the nation and the world in very profound ways. So I would absolutely characterize that. But because NIH is in Montgomery County, I think there's so many more things that you know with with NIH, FDA, in Montgomery County, there's so many more, there's so much more activity that can happen around that that can be to the benefit of Montgomery County and spawn even more of these traded cluster businesses. So there's a reason that those should be in Montgomery County because the massive traded cluster institution is here, but there are many more things that can be leveraged to accelerate that even further and deeper. 
James, let me ask you about what you were talking about earlier about the hospitality industry and, and making it, um, growing the IT part of it, the IT technology part of that. Can you, can you describe that a little bit more for us, for us who don't understand exactly? We're thinking of, you know, brick and mortar, Marriott, host hotels, choice yeah. hotels, where those folks go into work. We know a lot of those folks have been laid off at this time. There's been salaries that have been cut. Um, how, how do these people come back through IT? So here's the thing is that, uh, so these companies, here's the challenge that we have is that um, we hope the pandemic is something that's going to be in a rear view mirror, hopefully some point next year. And that those companies like, I'll tell you, when it's all clear, I'm going to be a happy road warrior again. <laughs> um, and so those companies will be fine, but they've learned to live lean they're not going to bring back every last one of those people. And they've realized that they can reinvent, they need to reinvent everything. And a lot of that reinvention is happening in tech. Mm -hmm. um, I want more of those tech people in the industry to be in Montgomery County, you know, who might've been in other entities because the, cus the ultimate customers for, the, for those advancements are here or just across the border at Hilton, you know, in, in, in Tyson. So there's a reason those companies should be here in much greater numbers. But the tech people are only maybe a quarter or 30% of those companies. 70% are other people with, you know, with, with, with knowledge of the industry as well, too. So there will be a lot of jobs grown for the non-tech people as well, too, in that category. And there will be more jobs growing in the tech side of that than sort of the, the headquarters jobs. Um, and Montgomery County, oddly, given the extreme dominance, just does not have that many tech businesses or, or hospitality tech businesses compared to the few other cities where we've seen that kind of dominance. They have a ton of tech companies that have grown up around that industry and that raise a lot of capital and build big businesses. Montgomery County hasn't had that yet, but it's an incredible opportunity for Montgomery County. Now, are the tech um, companies, are they... Uh, in in the United States, or many of them international, how does that work? Yeah, so the the good news is the U.S. is still a tech powerhouse, and the major headquarters companies are in the U.S. and in Montgomery County, or within five miles of Montgomery County. So um, I I mean I don't see any reason there could be thousands of jobs created in hospitality tech over the next five years um, in Montgomery County. Um, you know, high paying jobs that leverage the, the years or decades of experience of a lot of staff, you know, uh, in Montgomery County. So um, that's just one opportunity. And part of the reason why I want to see Montgomery County build the tech, the, the muscle of building tech companies is the quantum future is around the corner. Once again, you know, only 30% of those jobs are going to be quantum scientists. 70% are going to be people who can build growing companies. Very interesting, very interesting. If you could change one thing right now about how we do things here in Montgomery County, what would that be? Oh, <laughs> it's a okay. loaded question. A good question. You, have whole, you have a whole two minutes to answer it, so <laughs> yeah. it's certainly gonna be easy um, for you. One of the things we noticed when we walked in, we've never walked into a community that has done more analysis and smart thinking about themselves than any others. This is a policy town. I mean, you know, um, what we would like to see change and what we're trying to put on the table is um, it has a remarkable set of assets that are not fully brought to the highest and best potential yet. It is gifted with incredible assets that no one else in the U.S. or the world has. Um, and the world is moving in the direction of what those assets can do and what they can be. And it's Montgomery's time to decide we're doing it. Yeah, that's, it's, that's a very good point. And obviously with, with the vaccines, you mentioned this right now. I mean, the idea of branding us as an immunological headquarters, um, we have several companies that are involved, Novavax, Emergent Biosciences. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're being developed and manufactured here in Maryland. That's huge. That is, that is, that is something that we really need to take advantage of. Yeah, and then I should say just like advanced immunology uh, covers a lot of things, not just the vaccines, but uh, Montgomery County has those strengths in spades. And uh, it is, it, look, let, let's face it, it's a growth business for the, you know, for, for the next decade or for the rest of humanity, you know, so we might as well be the center of it. Well, Mr. Chung, it has been a very 
very informative 30 minutes. I'm going to turn it over to Council Member Katz to close us out. Thank you so much for coming and, and sharing all your knowledge with us. Oh, Thank you. Fun. You know, um, James, we always say that that this is the fastest 30 minutes that you're going to involved. This was the fastest 30 minutes, I think, since we've had any of these briefings. Uh, you, know, you really are just a remarkable person. You have a remarkable knowledge, and Montgomery County needs to listen to you. And, and what I sincerely appreciated was that you told us the good, the bad, and the ugly. And that's mm -hmm. what we have. We, we have all of that, and we're going to have to change to get back to all the good and, and uh, work on what, what other areas we need to work on. But James Young, president of REACH Advisors, I sincerely appreciated you being here, and I sincerely, and I know that we will be in touch. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Great, thanks. This has been fun. I look forward to more with you guys. Yes, Please. definitely. Please. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chung. Great, Take bye -bye. care.